the you know what's great is uh, I, I wanted to ask you where it comes from. I, I don't know anyone that wouldn't relate in some way sure. um, to one of the characters that are in here. And uh, the protagonist, Jake, mm -hmm. reminds me of me as a kid going through things that make him the way that he is, and yet you, you treat it in a very humorous way because he, he ends up having a very acerbic sort of wry sense of humor. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it, no. Any bit of you in there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, I loved writing that character because there is, you know, we put, we put ourselves into it, sure. and he's not me. He's, you know, he's better at a lot of things than me, but... Uh, that the way that he, that Jake looks at the world is the way that I do. The difference is I say what I'm thinking. Yeah. And the Jake Landry character is observing mm -hmm. stuff and often not saying it. Mm -hmm. Well, sometimes, you know, he doesn't want to say some stuff either because, uh, you know, Allie, uh, you know, the, the girlfriend, there's a whole side of, him, a side of him that he doesn't really want her to know about. And, and, and at one point she says something like, you know, all, there's dogs and wolves. And I, I mean, the symbolism of, of the dog and the wolf is, I think, one of the underlying themes in the book. And he, they're talking about the wolf being dominant in a pack. And she, at one point, she says, well, all men are dogs. There are no wolves. <laughs> right, right. And, 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 so and, what's but, your point? <laughs> well, the point is, no, the point is, it, it, the point is, is that Jack knows yeah. that there's a wolf there. And yeah, yeah. in yeah. fact, when he was sentenced, the judge says, there are two wolves in you. You can feed the good one or the bad one. So, so, fact, so when she says, all men are dogs, yeah. you know, he, in other words, that's, he, does, he doesn't let it out. Mm -hmm. No. Yeah, in Would, fact, I, can, I could read. A, if you could, because yeah. that's something I wanted to pick yeah. up on. Because when he was being sentenced, the judge, the Honorable Florence Alton Williams, told Jake about an old Cherokee legend about a young man who keeps getting in trouble because of his aggressive tendencies and yeah. and gives him uh, this advice. So well, if you could read that, it's on, page 34, uh, and I, it, it it did resonate yeah. with me. And, and yeah. it was a theme throughout the whole book. Yeah. It really um, was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, yeah. So here he is. He's, being, he's about to be sentenced for this crime, which is kept secret for much of the book. Finally, the judge turned toward me peered over the tops of her half-glasses. She cleared her throat. Mr. Landry, she said, there's an old Cherokee legend about a young man who keeps getting into trouble because of his aggressive tendencies. She spoke in a stern contralto. The young man goes to see his grandfather and says, sometimes I feel such anger that I can't help it. I can't stop myself. And his grandfather, who's a tribal elder and a wise man, says, I understand. I used to be the same way. You see, inside of you are two wolves. One is good and kind and peaceful, and the other is evil and mean and angry. The mean wolf is always fighting the good wolf. The boy thought about it for a moment and then said, but grandfather, which wolf will win? And the old man said, the one you feed. I love that. Boy, I did. Great. Isn't that It's such a thought? huge metaphor for for everything that I, I was really curious if you sat down and wrote it all in one fast pace because the one area you didn't touch, which I related to, is this power play, playing power politics. What, what is it? Who has the real power? Who's got the assumed power? Yeah. Um, did you just sit down and let everything that was happening now, in po not now, but when you were writing, happening in politics in your life and just let it ride? or how how do, you, how do you take what's happening and make it so that the reader is going to get sucked in from that first chapter? Yeah. Well, so, I mean, in sort of in terms of the, of the kind of relationship among the big shots yeah, yeah, yeah. and Jake and all that. So I knew that I sort of had this idea about what would happen if the entire top leadership of this huge company like Boeing were kidnapped and held for ransom. And then I thought, okay, so, but why do we care about these guys? You know? <laughs> yeah. Why do we care about them? And I thought, you know something, let's go a step further here. And let's do something which is sort of dear to my heart, which is let's show the underdog and let's kind of subvert the social order so that the underdog is the hero, right? Mm -hmm, I mean, yeah. yeah, it's a Hollywood cliche in a lot of ways, but it's also something, there's a reason that it is, which is that it's so appealing to us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, we root for the underdog. Right. And I, so I wanted to have someone there 
through whose eyes we see these guys, the big shots, and who could, would have this kind of acerbic uh, temperament and sort of see things and, and relate them to us in a way that we could get. Uh, and, and ultimately sort of deal with the question, sort of show us what is a hero? Because there are all these, these people who rule. Yeah. And then, there's, and then when, things, when it comes right down to it, they're not, they don't have that heroic because stuff. Because how, do you, how well, do you define it? The, but it goes back yeah. to Jake as a child when he's trying to, first of all, he's trying to protect his mother. Right. Right. Then he's trying to protect the kid in prison who's getting raped. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then he's trying to protect everyone at the lodge. I mean, all through his life, he's been trying to be the protector and saw himself as a failure. Right. So in a way, before you become a hero, you have to have a lot of false starts, I think. Yeah. And I, I like that. But I really all... like the, the, what the, you know, the hope that gives me. I can still be a hero. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to literary ladies from Boston, Massachusetts for signing up to Open Book Club. If you're in a book club, make sure to sign up today at openbookclub.tv. Hank Bodine is, is this sort of character in the book who's important because he's the, the, uh, you know, one of the top executives in the company. Uh, and he is swaggering and full of himself, and he sort of thinks he should have been the CEO. And this woman has been named CEO. Right. And he's trying to undermine her. <laughs> yeah. Thank I love, you for that. I love yes. when he's talking to her and he says she would probably be arching her eyebrow if it weren't for the boat. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. and, yeah. and then later, and then I love that too, because later in the book, it, when he arches his eyebrows, he says, I was able to arch yeah. my eyebrows because <laughs> yes. I didn't have the yeah. Botox. <laughs> I, I, I Botox. I think that was really, really, that was a, really funny. clever book. Yeah, yeah. He <laughs> had I liked that. Some very, very funny. One of the comments I loved is um, he's speaking to Allie when they were in their relationship and we were going back to the past. Yeah. And he tells her, he says, Allie, never let blank rent space in your head. Right. Yeah. Never let a jerk rent space right. in your head. That's close enough. That's the right version of it, and, right? uh, yeah, You're right, that's the correct version yeah. of it. And I said, isn't that true, though? Because how often do we all do it? Right. Get out of my right. head. Get out yes. of my head. You don't I get there. so much more done if I... Didn't yeah. If you booted them out, right. Yeah, that's right. So they're yeah, not worth I, the time. I love that. I love that because Great I statement. can use that for sure. Well, I, I liked <laughs> I liked Russell, one of the captors, one of the hostage takers. His um, his comment, ironically to Jake, was. The great tragedy of this century is that we have people who are living this life never knowing for sure if they're a coward or not. Right. Mm -hmm. I love that. That was, that was, that was yeah. great, too. And Russell is also, a, he's an important character. I mean, there are kind of these uh, thematic things that I tried to sort of pull through and yet not get in the way of the entertainment. Right, yeah. Because right? it's an entertainment. But yeah. I, wanted, I sort of wanted there, you to feel. You know, I wanted there to be stuff that you thought about. And that one of them was, like, so manhood and what's a hero right and what's a and what's a and and can a woman be a you know is, yeah. is, is can only a man be a hero in a situation right. like this mm -hmm. right uh and we've got this female ceo and all the men who do not want to have a woman telling them what to do mm -hmm. and in fact i talked to a number of female ceos uh to say well what's it like you know what's it like to be in a company where all the other all the other managers all the top people are men and it's a big problem, you know, because it? it's just a male-dominated, yes. the corporate world is sure. male-dominated, absolutely. And even though she had the title of CEO, yeah. Yeah. tell me if this is true. She really didn't have the power. That's right. Talk she about didn't. power plays. That's right. That's right. They were all acting as though they respected her when they were really stabbing her in the back stabbing all along. Stabbing her in the back and pulling the power away from her. And the board, yeah, right. in she fact, was, was yeah. sort of defanging her. Yes, and this, they the, were. Yeah. And this happened.